Okay, my PowerPoint is on Sofia Kovalevskaya. It's a little bit about her. Um, she was born in Moscow, Russia in 1850. She had an informal education from the University of Heidelberg, and we'll talk a little bit more about that informal education later. She worked along uh, Karl Weierstrass to receive her doctorate in mathematics, and she's most well known for her contributions to the theory of differential equations. Some of her early influences started out as family. Um, so as a child, her uncle was also pretty fond of mathematics and would often talk about um, some theories that he knew with her. And on the walls of her nursery, she actually had a lot of lecture notes posted on there, um, a lot of them dealing with differential equations, and she would read them and recognize a lot of things her uncle was talking about, which kind of um, influenced her to get more involved um, with mathematics. She would also read the works of her neighbor, um, who's a professor in physics, and he would often, um, he'd like write books and he would give them to her to read. And he discovered that she had a great ability and persuaded her father to enroll her in tutoring. And she was privately tutored um, later on in life by Weierstrass, who recognized her ability and helped her get her doctorate. So some of the setbacks that she faced, um, I would consider these to be pretty influential um, because the time period that she grew up, there was very little education for women. Um, so as a child, her father didn't want her to learn mathematics, so he actually took her out of the lessons that she was in. Um, and then when she went on to pursue a higher, higher education, she was actually forced to marry, um, because at the time in Russia, um, a woman could not live without her family unless she had permission from her father or her husband. So since her dad wasn't going to give her that permission, she had to um, get married so she could travel. So then she traveled um, and went to Heidelberg University, um, but unfortunately they would not allow her to enroll in her classes. So she begged her professors to let her enroll um, informally. So she would attend classes, but she wasn't officially a student. So then, um, after receiving her doctorate, uh, the best position she could find was teaching elementary students math, and she was very disappointed in that because she just got her doctorate, um, and that's the only position that was available because of the way that they were treated, treating women in that time period. And some of the first, um, she was a first woman in modern Europe to get a doctorate in mathematics. It was in 1874, and then a few years later, in 1884, she was the first woman to join an editorial board for a scientific journal. And then she was the first woman to become a professor of mathematics at the University of Stockholm. So some of her contributions to mathematics. Um, so in 1874, she submitted three papers as a part of her doctoral dissertation. Uh, they talked about partial differential equations, Saturn's rings, and elliptic integrals. Her theory of partial differential equations included the cauchy kovalevsky theorem, um, and that was the most popular paper. This theorem uh, gives conditions for the existence of solutions to a certain class of partial di differential equations, um, and they're used to prove local existence and uniqueness in a partial differential equation. As for K-12, um, her theorem is not specifically taught in high school, but students do learn the basics that support this theorem. So um, in higher calculus, they learn like integral calculus, and a lot of this does have to do with the theorem um, that she made with Kashi. So yeah. 